to The Fitterist Show with your host, Christopher Allen, where we explore the art of mind and body conditioning. It's been five years since Apple debuted the Apple Watch, and updates have continually evolved primarily around the new health and fitness features. With the advent of the Fitness Plus service from Apple, their strategy around health and fitness is really starting to take shape. In typical Apple fashion, the combination of world-class hardware and sensors, coupled with a cloud-based service, is the cornerstone of this strategy. Within the digital fitness space, two startups recently secured new venture funding to support their vision and expansion. Zwift, an online fitness platform that immerses cyclists and runners in virtual worlds, landed a $450 million financing round to build its own connected fitness hardware. And finally, artificially intelligence-powered fitness coaching platform Freeletics secured $25 million in financing for development and global expansion. So, let's dive in. The Apple Watch debuted in 2015, and at first, it was really positioned as just kind of an accessory. Certainly, it was a way to tell time on your wrist and a few novel features. But with the release of the Apple Watch 2, a more health-related focus started to really take shape. And ever since then, Apple has made fitness, health, and wellness kind of the foundation of the evolution of the Apple Watch. Over this evolution of various Apple Watch models, the company has put a lot of emphasis on heart health and fitness tracking. And with this newest version, the Apple Watch 6, they now add a blood oxygen sensor. So one important note about this oximeter is that the version is for fitness tracking only and not yet FDA approved, so it's not really to be utilized as a fully diagnostic tool. And while Apple's blood sensor is not a diagnostic tool that could detect things like COVID-19 and other ailments tied to lung and breathing functions. It's still a valuable tool for fitness tracking. So people like runners, mountain climbers use it at various elevation to measure their oxygen levels. Distance runners use it again for that same reason. And even weekend joggers, sports enthusiasts, will find that helps determine just where their oxygen levels roughly are, especially if they find themselves being tired or exhausted from their workouts. From a business strategy standpoint, even Tim Cook has often said that health and wellness are a core part of what Apple wants to do to help change the world with regard to health and fitness. And as such, health, wellness, and fitness are a prime part of Apple's business strategy. They have world-class facilities and labs, sensor development, and their fitness research center is an amazing health testing lab. It contributes significantly their ability to develop these sensors, these high-level fitness programs that are tied to their various devices, sensors, services to help users with their health and fitness journey. And in typical Apple fashion, they believe they're still in the early innings of this health and fitness game. They clearly have other health and fitness sensors on their hardware roadmap. And one of the things that Apple is rumored to be looking at is monitoring blood sugar readings. Now, that's still probably a little bit ways off to have a blood sugar sensor on the Apple Watch, but things and thinking of things like that is likely on Apple's radar. One other health monitoring function that has also been rumored is monitoring one's blood pressure. So you can display the blood pressure on the Apple Watch. Now, I'm not sure that you could do this with just with sensors given the way blood pressure is most accurately measured. But they could tie this feature into the watch band, maybe tied to a new sensor that could make this work down the road. Who knows? Never underestimate Apple and the brilliant scientists and engineers that work there. And from that business strategy, Apple's done pretty well. Apple Watch is by far the number one watch globally. And obviously it includes a big focus on health and fitness. So from a business strategy standpoint, they've done well. But Apple Watch, with its strong health and fitness focus, is also probably a little bit of a nod 
to Steve Jobs and his legacy in making sure people take care of their health and wellness. So stay tuned to Apple and its ongoing development of the Apple Watch and, of course, its connection to its cloud-based services. It's unlikely that Apple's going to stop evolving and innovating in the health and fitness space. So stay tuned. It's going to be interesting. And in our next news story... Zwift, a Southern California startup online fitness platform that hosts virtual reality cycle races, has raised $450 million from investors, including private equity firm KKR, in a funding round that will allow it to introduce its own indoor bike and other hardware. Zwift will also use the cash to build out its core software platform and increase headcount to execute on its operational strategy. Other investors in the round were Premira, the Amazon Alexa Fund, Specialized Bicycle Venture Capital Fund, Zone 5 Ventures. All of those joined the round, and earlier investors were Highland Europe, Novator, Causeway Media, and True, which is a Europe-based consumer specialist firm. So all in, Zwift has now raised $620 million altogether, and the company is valued at north of a billion dollars. So it's reached unicorn status. Now, why raise $450 million? Well, one, you can. But more importantly, the company right now just makes an app. It's a good app, and they have about two two and a half million people that have signed up to enter a virtual world that is part social media, part personal trainer, part computer racing game, and which is a unique combination that really makes the Zwift app appealing to both recreational cyclists and actually pros looking to train no matter what the conditions are outside. As we've mentioned before on the Federer Show, companies like Zwift and, of course, the Kingpin Peloton are clearly benefiting from a surge in at-home workouts as the coronavirus pandemic has shut gyms and forced more people to work out inside. Now, Zwift, their technology and their app lets riders kind of simulate outdoor training, but from an indoor perspective, from their bike in their living room. Riders can train or compete against one another by wirelessly connecting a bike trainer or treadmill to the Zwift app. So what's unique about these guys They don't have the dedicated hardware yet, which allows them right now to tap into a larger base from anyone who has a bike trainer, indoor bike trainer, or an indoor treadmill through their app. But now, with the new funding, Zwift is jumping into the hardware business itself. They're clearly seeing the benefit that Peloton has with vertical integration and building the integration of software and cloud-based services with dedicated hardware. And that is their go-forward strategy. As a private company, Zwift is a little close to the best with regard to any active subscriber numbers. They do charge $15 a month for the service. But just a data point, they hosted a virtual version of a Tour de France in July of 2020. And they had 117,000 people compete in this virtual Tour de France race. So they do have a loyal following, but they just haven't really disclosed any other consumer-based metrics. And in their quest to deliver a much more immersive and seamless experience for users, it's likely that in addition to the dedicated bike hardware that they developed, that they may develop a treadmill as well. And again, that gamification element on either the bike racing or the jogging, running, walking. I'll go, although walking might not be as much of a race. Anyway, that gamification element continues to be an important element of the overall Zwift experience. One thing that they said they are not intending to do is the group-based classes that have been successful for Peloton. Again, I think that's probably smart. Zwift is carving out a different type of a gamified experience 
tying in now hardware to just make that experience, the setup process, much more seamless and much more interesting than it is today. So we'll keep an eye on Zwift as they deploy their $450 million of new capital in improving that user experience, the hardware rollout over the next year or so. And our next news story. Freeletics, the artificially intelligent powered fitness coaching app has closed a $25 million Series B funding. Now, leading this round was Jazz Venture Partners and Causeway Media Partners with support from KKCG. Now, the history of this company, they raised a $45 million Series A funding in at the end of 2018. And this new capital will be used to develop new technology and further expand globally and launch new business verticals. The company was founded back in 2013 and they're really well established in Europe. And they have been increasingly penetrating America, North America, because they're based in Munich, Germany. But their vision is clearly global and they want to challenge and inspire people to become the greatest version of themselves, both mentally and physically, and that's a pretty lofty mission. Now, Freeletics uses AI technology to coach users through digital workouts and through meal plans. So the coaching algorithm kind of gives users customized fitness routines and nutrition tips based on personal preferences, user feedback, and embedded scientific research. The Freeletics app also offers fitness and mindset coaching. And Freeletics says that they have 48 million users across 175 different countries. They also claim to be the number one fitness app in Europe with more than 600,000 paid subscribers. So they kind of bill it as a personal trainer in your pocket, smart personal trainer that allows you or helps you train almost anytime, anywhere, with again, personalized training plans and workouts. So the algorithm behind the scenes learns from the millions of users that are using this app and the individual feedback they provide so that the workouts and the training plans get, quote, smarter as they become more uniquely designed to suit different users within different contexts. Beyond the coaching, again, Freeletics has a community page where people can connect share different results, and actually motivate each other. With the new funding, one of the things the Freeletics CEO, Daniel Sobani, says is that, quote, not everything in the fitness industry has been telling us for the last 30 years has been setting people up for success. So we want to put an end to that and be clear and honest about the work it takes to reach your goals while making real, sustainable results accessible to as many people as possible. That's one sentence. And those goals don't have to be just losing weight. Whatever the finish line looks like, we want to help people get in there in the most efficient, sustainable, and enjoyable way. So laudable goals, and clearly they want to help people plan and guide them to reach those goals. I thought it was kind of interesting that, hey, not everything the fitness industry has said over the last 30 years has been true. Like, give us a week, we'll take off the weight, and you will permanently have lost that weight forever and ever and ever. Not true. Anyway, back to Freeletics. The artificial intelligence employed by Freeletics is really to tailor everything to a single user. The goal, again, trying to help the user be efficient and effective so that it's easier to work toward their goal, whether that goal be losing weight, gaining weight, gaining some muscle, toning, whatever it is. And they focus on personalization because fitness, by definition, is super highly personalized. What works for me doesn't work for you. Might not work for you. It might. Lots of factors come into play. And that's why it's kind of difficult to do from a machine learning perspective. If you can pull it off, it could be huge. But it's super difficult to do given you need to look at so many things from body type, metabolism, genetics, time to work out, workout preference, 
options, tons of different things, but they really want to focus on keeping things personalized as much as they can so that people are more consistent and whatever time, space, equipment that they might have, they can find a workout powered by that personalized artificial intelligence. As a matter of fact, Freeletics actually claims that they have three and a half million workout options. So you may say, I want a quiet workout with equipment that fits within a small apartment that won't disturb the neighbors or one that requires a certain time length, or perhaps you have full access to a gym and you want to lift weights. All of these criteria are evaluated and a plan is put forth that adapts to your needs. In the secret sauce that Freeletics might just have is this personalized training experience, but combined with audio coaching, which I think is unique. Their goal is to educate and kind of motivate bringing more mindfulness to the experience. So it's much more of a mindset coaching that helps people sustain their workouts and fold it into their actual lifestyle. So the person is building healthy habits on their fitness journey, all while putting more emphasis on mindfulness, stronger mindset, and even meditation for longer term results. From a business model perspective, Freeletics uses the classic freemium model. So the app is free to download and you can use certain elements of the app until you start to hit paywalls. And then when you want more personal coaching, you need to pay for a subscription. Now, the training and nutrition bundle, which includes customized training plans, artificially intelligence-based coaching and nutrition support starts at $2.21 per week. So that seems fairly reasonable. So you're basically looking at $12 a month, or they do have an annual option that gives you a discount for $75 per year for the Freeletics subscription. And when you look at their business success, Freeletics says that they have doubled their subscribers from 300,000 to now 600,000 just in the past 12 months so that they are on a fast growth curve and they are looking to again use this additional capital to accelerate their growth plans and expand globally. It's an interesting model. They've got a very scalable approach on the model. The question will come down to how good is this artificial intelligence coaching, the nutrition support. You know, the mindset is kind of a bonus. It's great if you can pull that off. But if you can nail the training and nutrition support using artificial intelligence to scale it globally, you've got a seriously effective business model. If you don't, you, you get some challenges. But with over 600,000 current subscribers, they're figuring stuff out. They're getting plenty of feedback from their subscriber base. And I suspect they're on a good trajectory. We'll keep an eye on them and see how they do with their new funding. Stay tuned. With that, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to The Fitterist Show. You can follow us on Instagram at Fitterist Mind Body and on Twitter at Fitterist Mind. If you enjoyed this episode, please send it to a friend or subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future episodes of The Fitterist Show. My name is Christopher Allen, and make it a magical day.